Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to split and join files in Linux. So this is pretty easy. Um, there are you know, probably different reasons you might want to do this. Um, you know, maybe back a long time ago you might split a large file up to fit it on floppy disks back when people used to use them. Who knows, maybe you have a re really ridiculously large file now and you have to fit it on a USB drive, but these DIS drives are so big, not much point in splitting it. But either way, regardless of your reason for doing it, um, I'm going to show you how to split files up into multiple smaller files and then combine them back together, joining them. So we're in a test directory called test, and we have a file called rabbitmq server generic unix, blah, blah, blah. There's a version number. It's a tar file, one single file, and it is uh, 16 megs. So uh, let's split this file up. So we're, we're going to say split-b. 1m rabbitmq. All right, so split this file up, and uh, let's let's see what we have. We have a bunch of no. It, you, you'll notice it automatically gives names to all the different components. So so you have uh, you know x is the default um, name that it uses, and it it just appends a different letter combination to the end, to, so that there are the, all the pieces are going to be unique. And let's look at the size of these. So these are all one meg files, and with the last one being smaller. So um, what, what this command does, we, we say split dash b, and we specify the size, one, one meg. So the max for each, each uh, piece of the file is gonna be one meg. So it's gonna create the first, first chunk of a file at one meg. Once it reaches one meg, it starts creating another one and another, all the way until it gets to the last, and then it just uses up the remaining data, which is less than a meg. So, Let's say if we want to recombine those. So we, we can go like this. We, we can say um, cat x asterisk test dot um, tar. But let's just basically use cat to concatenate these files. That's what the cat command is actually for. So um, concatenate them into a new tar file. Now this should pull them in in order by default because these were written in alphabetical order. So the default behavior of this, it should give us an identical file. So here we see two tar files, um, the same size, um, rabbitmq and test.tar. Well, let's just verify that they really are the same size. So let's try md5sum, or that they really have the exact same data. So we're gonna do rabbitmq and test. So we're gonna just check the MD5 checksum of both of these files. And we will see that the MD5 checksum comes out to exactly the same thing. So we, we can confirm that these two files are in fact exactly identical with no differences whatsoever. So that, that's all fine and great. <clears throat> um, but let's show some more examples. So let's see here. Um, let's see, what do we wanna do next? You could choose to provide a pre, yeah, let, let's try providing a prefix. Um, so uh, rm, anything with the x, so we're just going to clear out what we did so far. Now we only have our rabbitmq tar file in here. Now let, let's say if we want to go back and uh, split, split this up again. So we're going to split it, almost the same thing, except this time there, we're going to use another parameter. So we're, we're still doing split dash b1 one, one meg, but um, and we specify the file that we want to split up, but now we're, we're going to also specify a prefix. So we could specify a prefix like um, maybe call it, um, uh, what, 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 let, let's come up with a random name, call it, uh, let's just say test underscore, maybe two underscores, test double underscore. Now every, every one of these files that gets split up is going to be prepended with that. They, they should still be in alphabetical order. Let's give this a shot. There we go. Now, notice um, almost the exact same results as before. Um, you know what? The time is different. All right, so th this is fine. All right, so before, yeah, yeah. So so we'll, we'll, we'll ch take a quick look at these. Now, you'll notice still one meg files. Notice it's out of order. It's still in alphabetical order. It's just that, um, I'm sorting by time created. That's kind of strange that this one was created slightly later. Um, maybe it's not sorting by time based on the second. I anyways, doesn't matter. Let's say um, if we remove that T, TR, 
there we go. Now they're going to be in alphabetical order. Uh, and here we go. So the, you know, creates a one meg chunk in alphabetical order. And the last one's going to be slightly smaller because we didn't have enough data to work all the way up to uh, a meg. So exact same functionality that we saw before, except uh, this time, uh, instead of prepending, instead of using X, the, the default, you know, file name to pre, the default prefix is an X. Now we're specifying the prefix. It's going to be, it's going to be test underscore underscore a so um a and then a b and so on right so make makes sense right so um one thing that might make sense also is if you do the same thing but maybe you want to use the same file the the original file name just uh you know so you, you're not wondering what these files are when you i mean really in reality you're going to probably throw these in a directory with a name that makes sense but um let's say maybe you do want to use the original file name in the prefix so just specify it again like that. Um, put an underscore and hit enter. Now let's see what we have. So there we go, in order. Um, you know, let's do this in reverse. There we go. So this gives us, uh, yeah, all right. So same same deal. Well, you know, let's not do it in reverse. All right, we were, we're just gonna see these at the top because they come before the word test. But now we have our original tar file. Now we have a bunch of components using the same naming convention as the original file. So you can kind of see what they were a part of. And uh, we see the different part names here. So that's kind of nice. Um, we, we could actually do something, um, let's say rm all tar underscore, just to remove those, oops, extra files and rm test. So now we have our original Unix file here. Now I, I should get back to, I should move on to combining these, but um, just one thing I should point out, th this would actually make sense as a naming convention. So if you really want it to, to make a lot of sense, you could essentially, let me, let me just expand this a little bit, rerun this. Okay, so now you can see you have the original tar file and you can see using the same naming convention, you just see part, so you're, it kind of indicates that it's a part of that file, and then you see the number of the part. So that, that that's that's one way you might do this in actual practice. Anyways, um, let's show you how you would join these together. Um, I'm gonna actually, or I, I actually did, I showed you how you could cat them together. Let's see if there's anything else. Um, what, what else might we wanna cover in terms of joining? So I, I used cat to join them. Um, also, you know, I let, let's just show, you know, this this will probably work. Let's uh, you you can probably, you know, what? I'm gonna use, I'm gonna try combining all of these files using this naming convention. It's basically the same thing I already showed you, but just to be you know more complete than I really have to be, um, you could say cat and go like this, uh, part underscore asterisks and combine them all into a into a secondary file um, and, and we're gonna put an underscore B on the end of it just so we can tell it apart now notice we have these two files this is the first one and this is the combined file from all the parts now let's do an md5 sum on these All right, so yeah, there we go. Confirmed the MD5 checksums are exactly identical, um, exactly as we expected. Um, everything went completely fine with that. So hopefully you found this useful or at least interesting, if nothing else. You might want to give me a thumbs up. Um, you might want to hit that subscribe button also and uh, hit the little bell icon. Up. Otherwise, uh, YouTube's probably not going to let you know when we come out with a new video. Um, we do have a lot of great stuff coming up on, and we've actually, if you want to check our list of videos, we've already put out a lot of uh, pretty interesting things, some more interesting than others. Um, we cover a lot of great stuff, um, coding, servers, hardware, software, 3D printing, electronics, uh, single board computers, robots, networking, all sorts of great tech related stuff that you're not going to want to miss. So if you, if you want your YouTube feed to uh, you know, be that much more interesting, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button. But more important than any of that stuff, you're going to want to leave a comment down below, especially if you know something that I don't know. 
um, definitely let me know, not just for me, but for the next person who comes along and watches this video and reads the comments. Um, leave a comment that for them also. Any, any comments, questions, criticisms, whatever you want to say, I probably want to hear it. So do leave a comment down below. And uh, that's pretty much it for today. So as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.